so often we picture that word and the fact that it's been defunct for the past two. Before we begin our worship, I would like to thank Pastor Tim. Trish and I visit um, um, and help a small church called Church Vista at the bottom of Thompson Hill called Five Day Vision. We meet once every two weeks as a family. And so as I teach, um, there is a time of um, worship and particularly work in sign language that is uh, specifically informal. We speak uh, and Jim goes through this and then it's what we do as well. We try to have a class for the week that we bring to them in regards to what is going on in their life and in our life. And I thought I would share our first class for the week, the one that came from the Romano taken from his church by their Nazi and uh, was not able to teach um, at all until after the war was over. He became a spiritual inspiration to Germans and a number of European, uh, Euro a number of European countries. He wrote this, I remember coming at a time in which Europe had devastated with the war that had just concluded. He was returning to the pulpit of his, uh, to his church. You would think of many things that he would have to say, but this is what he said at that time. Blessed indeed are those who have not seen and yet have learned to see. Blessed are they who ask for no miracle, demand nothing out of the ordinary, but they find God's message in every day of their life. Blessed are they who are quick to hear, humble, free-spirited, that is, free from worry and Blessed are they who can find God's message in the gospel even for the little, even if they have never heard it. And he said it more than a thousand times. Or in sermons with no message. Or in a phrase with no religious power to it. Yes, blessed are those who can find God in the rhythm, rhythm of the mundane. In work and health. In success. In joy. In encounters with random art, but also on occasion for just the presence of the Father. Blessed are those who can see the 
in the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As they lead pastor in the church, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And now we hear the word of God. The first reading today is from Isaiah chapter 55. Ho, oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Uh, as you are able, please stand for the reading of the gospel. 
The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 14th chapter. Now when Jesus heard about the beheading of John, of John the Baptist, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled, and they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. This is the word of the Lord. While they are getting that together, I just wanted to let you know that um, there's a few suitcases up here around the font, but this is just a small sample of what is going to uh, be going back with Bob and Deb. There's probably, um, of the large suitcase, another six of those downstairs. They just don't have room to bring everything back in their car because they've been camping, and so they've got a car full of other things. But um, what are in these suitcases are mostly Days for Girls related uh, items. And Days for Girls is uh, an organization that French River we've participated in for about, oh, I don't know, maybe four years now? Four or five. Four or five years, yeah. And it's, it's making kits for girls um, so they can stay in school, they don't have to stay at home, when they're having their menstrual periods. It's very important for them to have an education. So there are things in these uh, kits, such as um, shields and liners and underwear and washcloths, and they come in a really pretty bag. And all in all, Carol Serene had uh, tallied all these things that are gonna be going back with you guys this trip, or subsequent trips. <laughs> there are 3,608 pieces that you'll be bringing back, which is a lot of, a lot of stuff. So thank you for bringing this back. Good morning. Well, thank you for inviting us here. It's the first time we've been inside a church since the first week in March when we reported on our El Salvador trip. What? Move over? <laughs> Okay, <laughs> you know, he's way. <laughs> um, so it's really great to be here. Um, it's sort of a little different than usual, obviously. But um, we thank you for inviting us to report on our latest mission of healing. Um, on the screen right now is the banner that we put up outside each community when we're doing one of our health fairs. Um, and there will be a little bit more. First, though, I want to show you just a little bit of a video um, of a program that I did for, that I do for, as part of an immigration talk. Um, but the first about minute and a half of this give a pretty good um, history of the people of El Salvador and why we see a lot of PTSD. So, see if we can get this going. The Spanish conquest of El Salvador. The gap between the wealthy landowners and the indigenous people they enslaved in a feudal system grew. The landowners deforested the land to grow crops, causing permanent environmental damage. 
2% of the population controlled 60% of the farmable land. There was extreme poverty, unemployment, and overpopulation. In 1932, there was a revolt by the peasants that was quickly squashed by the Salvadoran military. More than 30,000 native peoples and mixed race peasants were killed. Any attempt at organization by the poor resulted in suppression and death squads by the military for the next several decades. The rebel groups eventually organized as the FMLN. In March of 1980, Salvadoran Archbishop Oscar Romero was assassinated by a death squad while saying mass. He had called on soldiers to disobey orders to kill innocent civilians. This marked the beginning of the civil war between the FMLN and the government-backed military. The government forces were trained, supported, and supplied by the United States because we feared success by the rebels would introduce communism into Central America. During the 12-year war, 75,000 civilians died. More than one million people fled to other countries, many to the U.S and an unknown number disappeared. The peace accords of 1992 were brokered by the United Nations. Then it goes on to talk about the rise of gangs in El Salvador, which isn't really what we're talking about today. Um, so just as a review of where El Salvador is, um, it's in the middle of Central America on the Pacific coast, surrounded by um, Honduras, Guatemala, and Nicaragua. The Missions of Healing got started in the year 2000, which is the year uh, that we moved to Duluth right after the first Mission of Healing. I had just become a nurse practitioner, and our church in Brookfield, Wisconsin, had just become a partner church of the church Heroes of the Faith, um, which is in a community called the Heroes, or Los Héroes, in El Salvador. The church heroes of the faith is in the middle of this slide. Um, and in that church, um, Pastor Santiago arranged for us to do a little bit, a little medical mission. And he had the health department come and weigh children and update their vaccines. And I examined people on the altar of the church, which was covered with a plastic tablecloth. And that's what you see in the picture on the left. That's me when I, before I had all this gray hair. <coughs> Um, so for the next 15 years, the missions grew and changed until finally there were 30 of us uh, going, um, doctors, nurses, and lay people doing um, traditional medical care and taking a lot of pharmaceuticals along with us. Uh, we divided into two groups because we were so large so that um, one group went in the beginning of February and served the northern Microregion of the Salvadoran Lutheran Church, and the other group goes two weeks later, and they serve the Central South Microregion of the Central of the Salvadoran Lutheran Church, and that's the way it is today. In October of 2014, my friend Linda Muth and I spent a month working with health departments in El Salvador in the region that we serve with our missions. We learned that access to care was pretty good and their pharmacies were pretty well stocked, but that health education was sorely lacking. People didn't know what they were taking medicine for. They thought when they finished their card of blood pressure pills, that meant they were done. And so um, we decided in um, 2016 to switch to a health fair format um, where we would do health education how to stay well, and how to take care of yourself if you already have a chronic illness. And that also relieved us from having to import medications into the country, which was getting very burdensome. So our, our headquarters is the Hotel Villarreal in San Salvador. It's where we um, store our supplies in a conference room. It's where the team gathers to reorganize all the supplies at the beginning and then after each fair. We take a quarter of the supplies each day so that we don't run out for anyone. Um, and the main team arrives on Saturday and you, we put them to work right away organizing things. 
but on Sunday before the fairs start, we worship with our partner church, Heroes of the Faith, and this was a really special Sunday because they had confirmation and first communion, which is a very big deal. Um, so um, you see the children um, that were honored. On the left is Angelita, who is my goddaughter. Um, on the right is Marcella, her cousin, and Bob was her honorary godfather because her godparents weren't there. And Ulysses in the middle, um, his godparents were also there. And after church was over, which lasted a couple hours, I would say, we had cake, and these cakes are a really big deal in El Salvador. Um, so we had to make sure that we had three cakes for three kids. You couldn't like share. Um, and then after we all had cake, we had lunch. <laughs> so on Monday, um, the health fair begins uh, with health education. We call it the Feria de Bienestar Familiar, which is family wellness fair. It's made up of multiple charlas, which are small educational um, meetings led by either a Salvadoran or US teacher. And at each meeting, we try to give out some kind of little prize or remembrance after people attend our charla. We, we go to four communities in four different days, and each day starts with um, prayer, devotions, and singing. And um, these are the four locations, um, our morning devotions in each of our four locations of 2020. Each person that comes to the fair starts off at a registration table where they receive a passport card, which you see in the middle of the picture. It's got squares on it. Each of us who do charlas has um, a unique rubber stamp, and when someone has attended our charla, we stamp in one of those squares. Um, and so at the end, we can kind of tell what people uh, attended and what they were interested in if we get their cards back. The brown paper bag is what they receive when they register, and that's got some educational information um, regarding health and also some health-related coloring sheets. We're kind of going to go through the, prayer, the stations that we had this year. Um, everyone is encouraged to attend the prayer station, um, which is led by Pastor Chamita. Um, the Salvadorans lead um, a lot of the charlas. So this, this um, mission of healing is a collaborative effort between the Salvadoran Lutheran Synod and their health leaders and the health, the governments of the communities that we're in who supply a lot of um, like chairs and tables and canopies um, and also the pastor of the local church um, as well as the local health department that we contact to request their attendance. Pastor Santiago, who's the pastor of our partner church, Heroes in the Faith, led the stress-reducing area, and they listened to people's stories about what happened to them or their relatives during the war, um, and also do some like breathing and relaxation type things. Um, the migration charla is also led by pastors, and the main purpose of that is to discourage people from trying to reach one of the northern countries um, illegally, um, especially given the current situation at our border, and it isn't really a lot different, excuse me, at the Mexican um, or, or the Canadian border. Um, they, the Lutheran Church also provides support for people who are returned to El Salvador from other countries, in other words, deported. The focus for this year was on respiratory health at the request of the Salvadoran team. And NOLA's yoga charla that dealt with respiratory health and other exercises was really popular. She does it for all ages. Her translator, Fernando, is um, in the brown shirt there. And he was, got so good at doing her charla that she was able to leave and walk around and visit the other charlas, and then Fernando did the yoga charla. Reflexology um, has been a part of our mission of healing for many years, um, where 
massaging certain parts of the feet um, corresponds to certain body parts. So this year the focus was on uh, respiratory and Pastor um, Francisco Garcia was the leader of that charla and he had quite a few Salvadoran helpers who have learned over the years how to do the reflexology. My charla was respiratory infections and treatments. Ironically, this was about three weeks before COVID-19 came along. So the focus of my charla was um, on the symptoms of respiratory infections and when you need to go to the clinic and when you don't. And specifically, that most respiratory infections do not require antibiotics because similar to our country here, people want antibiotics for everything. Um, so we discourage the use of antibiotics if you don't need it. But if you do go to the clinic and they prescribe an antibiotic, then the other emphasis is to take the whole thing because people tend to share them with their neighbor who has similar symptoms um, or save some for later. Uh, so that was the other. So my um, premio that I gave my prize was acetaminophen tablets and liquid, liquid to um, anyone who had children in the family. So for 2021, our mission of healing is canceled, but we are gonna be doing some remote charlas, um, trying some outside the box things. So my charla is gonna have to be changed um, as far as education to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Um, there was typhoid going on in El Salvador when we were there. So Tim's charla was about the importance of hand washing um, to prevent the spread of disease. He had made a cardboard cutout of the poop emoji that some of you ha that have phones know about. So a really popular thing was for people to have a selfie taken with the poop emoji. <laughs> um, and um, Tim's uh, premio was a bar of soap. Um, our granddaughter Sage um, that went this year for the second time and she did the dental charla and um, every person got enough toothbrushes for their family. Um, a couple years ago, we had a donation at Hope Lutheran Church of 37,000 toothbrushes. We have a whole room full of toothbrushes in the basement of the church. So um, everybody that wants a toothbrush gets a toothbrush, and then each family gets a big tube of toothpaste. So I'm going to let Bob tell you about some more of the charlas. Good morning. Uh, this nutrition charge was... Charla was led by Linda Muth, who's been the group leader of the Mission of Healing for the last 20 years. Uh, Debbie, by the way, has been the medical director for the med various medical missions that we've been on. Anyway, Linda lives there six months of the year and comes back to the U.S. six months of the year. She so knows the nutrition needs of the Salvadoran people. They generally must have to eat more than beans, rice, and flour, uh, corn tortillas, however, they sometimes don't have the ability to do that. So she gave them tips about what to buy if they could buy something and how about what intelligent choices were needed when, when you're thinking about eat, eating something healthy. Diabetes is the main focus for our clinic as well. Uh, diabetes is a problem in El Salvador. Uh, many of the people are native, so they have a propinquity for di diabetes. Anne Long Henry, Henry was a nurse in Eau Claire, went over the risk factors for diabetes, also went over the necessary changes for, for behavior as far as eating and other things when you had diabetes or are pre-diabetic. Helping with this is our lab. Our lab tech is uh, Diane Koss, who has been with us for probably six years. She does glucose checks for people who refer, are referred to her from the diabetic charla, and also urine tests for uh, infection and pregnancy. Uh, for those of you who might not know it, there's a bunny in the bottom. Uh, maybe you know, know what the bunny relates to in pregnancy. 
Cardiovascular health is done by Carol Moore. This is her, was her seventh or eighth year with us. Uh, she died, did, uh, showed signs of cardiac health and also gave people tips about how to keep their heart healthy. She took blood pressure for everybody as well. And there seems to be a problem with high blood pressure in El Salvador. Anybody who had a too high blood pressure was referred to the clinic, just as everyone who had symptoms of, of diabetes would be referred to the clinics. Natural medicine was done by a woman who made tea out of a local plant. The local plant had a, had a medicinal qualities that she knew about. I wasn't aware of what they were, but everyone see, seemed to enjoy the tea that they got in a little cup. El Salvador has a problem with, as we have here, as you get older, your vision gets worse, and so people have opportunity in our a mission of healing to get reading glasses starting at age 40. So they'll come and they'll be measured by this woman in the pink. She's been doing this for about 12 years, and she knows exactly what to do. It's not necessarily for reading, because some people who can't read, sew. So if you're crocheting, you've got to see where the needle is going. And also, if a man needs to saw a board or needs to do some fine work as far as uh, souvenirs, uh, making souvenirs, it's a good that he knows where his uh, saber saw is going. Days for Girls. It's not just Days for Girls kits. Although Days for Girls kits are very important to the women, to the young ladies here. Um, if you look, you might see some fabrics that you've used if you make Days for Girls kits. Uh, I've made some bags last year and I think I recognize one pattern. You know, I never thought I'd be excited about going to Joanne Fabric and picking up different fabrics. It's really kind of cool. I mainly did uh, liners, so I had to deal with flannel. Anyway, along with the kits, uh, the girls are taught about what menstruation is. That's part of the Day Days for Girls program. Very important that these kids know what's going on and know that they're being actually saved for three or four or five days of school because they have these kits. Mom and Baby Health was led by our daughter, uh, Jenny. Uh, Jenny has six kids age, ranging from age eight to age 22, so she knows about mom and baby health. One important thing that she went over, and uh, most importantly for women who are uh, first moms, to tell them that nursing is the most important thing that you can do for your child. Uh, our Days for Girls team also made breast pads to give to these women that are nursing uh, out of scraps from the Days for Girls projects. So a couple things came out of Days for Girls for this. Oh, we had prenatal vitamins, yes. Every woman who is pregnant or nursing gets one year supply of prenatal vitamins, which is very important for the mom and for the baby. Pastor Emily, uh, who is the woman who's gray hair right here, uh, had, gave uh, discussions on sexual health with the kids, boys and girls and also gave out condoms. So condoms were in the paper bags on the table, so the brown paper bags only went to people who have, were given out condoms, so it really wasn't anonymous, but, but they had some protection for 10 days. This is a uh, topic that has been near and dear to my heart in the past, uh, prostate health. In the years of going to the depart health departments and visiting uh, the doctors and nurses and seeing what go, what's going on in the clinics, I noticed that there was no mention, no, no chart or no poster that w went into anything dealing with men's health. So I thought, well, I'll, I might propose doing a prostate health issue, so I did. My target group is men 60 to, 60 to 75 and older, and I explained what the symptoms were for pros prostate health, prostate issues. And I also had uh, charts of the swimsuit area that explained what happened as well. So as I went over these charts, I watched the guys who had the reading glasses look, look, look very carefully at some of the symptoms. Those guys that talked to later and referred them to the Department of Health for an examination. 
Unidades de Salud, or the local clinics, they call it Unidad, uh, were present in all of the uh, mission of healing to th this year. They're very important because we could refer anyone with a heart problem, with a, a prostate problem, with a diabetic problem, directly to the health department, and they would start a record on them. The kids come with them. There's kids everywhere. Uh, from the first mission of healing, from the first health fair, we decided to have a person design, designated to give the kids something to do. One of the most important things that the kids like to do is to color. And they color within, within the lines. Perhaps they're taking an example from the woman in the middle top, a grandma who's coloring within the lines. They also would play checkers and there were also toy, plastic toys uh, that they played with on a tarp. Uh, those had to be washed every day because it's pretty dirty, pretty dusty. At the end of the day, <coughs> participants who turned in their passport had their name put, put in for a, a uh, prize. And the prize was a basket full of staples, uh, rice, beans, dried milk. Um, and the special treat was a package of cookies. So this was a really big deal. People stayed around to the end. In the post fair, <clears throat> which is after the fair was over, the day, the day afterwards we had a day that we visited a few place, places. We visited the place where Monsignor Romero was assassinated. Now it's Saint Oscar Romero. We visited the house that he stayed in at this hospital. We visited a El Rosario church, which on the outside and the bottom left is a pretty plain place, but on the inside it has wonderful, wonderful stained glass windows. And when the sun shines in, the, the color seems to change from minute to minute. We visited the tomb of Oscar Romero, uh, which is a very moving thing in the San Salvador, San Salvador Cathedral. We also did a tourist day. It wasn't historical, but we did visit a couple of places. We visited at the site of the Santa Ana and his Alco volcano. We visited a coffee shop. Uh, we visited the cathedral in Santa Ana and also a renovated opera house. Very fun things. And by the way, we always got to eat pretty well for lunch and dinner at the, eh, on the way to these places. <clears throat> And the post team, which means after the main, after the main, yes, thank you. After the health fairs were we did visited something. We worshipped with the bishop, Medardo Gomez, in, in his church, which is a new church. We also visited some health departments. And the top middle is doc, Dr. Chiquillo, who was a riot. Uh, we, we gave her some manual breast pumps. She has a milk bank that she d gets milk for, from nursing mothers and takes to a in, neonat neonatal intensive care unit in San Salvador. It's the only person that does this in the whole country. We distributed Days for Girls kits to various, uh, various schools in the area. Again, you might look to see if you recognize a pattern. I recognize the one in the lower right, the pink one. Kind of fun making these things. We visited the church, which, which is a little bit different. The church in Los Aires is not now fairly neat. They just painted it this year. I think it was in our honor. They change the color about every two or three years. This is our team on the left. And the right is a combined picture of the Salvadoran group and our group. Their group outnumbers ours by quite a few. The health fair and missions of healing take the coordination of a lot of people. <clears throat> it takes the Salvador, Salvador Lutheran Senate, uh, people from the United States, from a couple different churches. It takes the health departments, and it takes volunteer help from people like you who give to, to support the things that we do. And especially the group here, if anybody's here from 
The Days for Girls, you do a lot of work. I know you do because I do it myself. So I'd like to thank all of you for do, helping us. And uh, we'll stick around a little bit while afterwards and answer other questions that you might have. And, Debbie, yes. and just one more thing, because on the front of your bulletin, I wanted to say that you have the picture. The picture is Salvador del Mundo, which is Savior of the World Monument um, in the center of San Salvador, where um, all kinds of, of important things take place um, for the people of El Salvador. If there's gonna be a demonstration, if there's gonna be a celebration, it's meet at Salvador del Mundo. Um, so, Sue, did you do the, do the bulletin? I don't, so Tiffany must, whoever did the bulletin, thank you for putting Salvador del Mundo on the front. And thank you all for your attention. Hopefully we didn't go on for too long. <laughs> And we will be here afterwards if anybody's got any questions. And we thank you for your discipleship, and we are happy to be able to be part of it when we know that you are making a difference for some people in this world, which is so important. Thank you again. Please remain seated as we profess our faith in the Apostles' Creed. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the protection of God, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now hear the prayers of our church. Growing in faith and discipleship, we give thanks for God's presence in this time and place as we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Let us lift our hearts, hands, and voices in prayer to God on behalf of all people. Jesus' disciples learned his power by obeying his command to feed the people. We are your disciples too, O Lord. We are sometimes overwhelmed by the size of the task. So many hungry, hurting people, and we are daunted by our resources. We are so small, old, limited, untutored. Give us the obedient hearts of the first disciples. Help to follow your son by the little steps, sitting, praying, listening, sharing, and gathering. Remind us that Jesus will take Break and bless our small gifts and use them to feed the world starved for him. We lift in prayer our brothers and sisters in El Salvador affected by the pandemic of COVID-19 and the plague of locusts which adds to their suffering and those who are unemployed. 
and wake each day to hunger. May they be fed and their white flags have no need to have be posted. Keep this congregation in your care, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love of, uh, in Jesus Christ. Use our words and deeds to share that love with those around us who need it most. Teach the leaders of the nations to incline their ears to you, to rightly lead their people, and to seek that good which endures. Give them the desire and the means to provide food, jobs, education, and safety for those entrusted to their care. And grant to all people those good things which sustain life and hope. Compassionate Father, there are among your children those who have suffered a loss of a loved one. Grant them the comforting presence of the Holy Spirit and the community of caring friends that in the midst of their unmeasurable loss, they would know the depth of your love. Inspire us to live our lives in the resurrection hope and draw us to you in our final days. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Have mercy on those among us who journey in the anxieties that arrive from illness, injury, operations, and treatment. Grant those whom you have gifted with the skills of healing to make those we have prayed for this week whole in body, mind, and spirit. We pray for those who are unable to worship with us this morning. We know their needs before even ask. We lift especially those whose names we have been raising in our private prayers. God of love, our refuge, and our strength, hear the prayers of the, Pine, of the French River Church. Grant us the grace to be ever faithful to you. We ask this through Christ our Savior and Lord, who taught us. O oh Lord, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us share with each other the prayer and a blessing either way as you turn to your neighbor. be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, to our Savior Jesus Christ who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the ways of everlasting life. We give you thanks for your dear Son at the heart of human life, near to those who suffer, beside the sinner, among the poor, which is with us now. For on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, he gave thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again after supper, he took the cup, and again he gave thanks, gave it to his disciples to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you, for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. 
do this in memory of me. And now gathered as one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray together. O oh God, in this holy communion, you have welcomed us into your presence, nourished us with the words of mercy, and fed us at your table. Amid the cares of this life, strengthen us to love you with all our hearts. Serve our neighbor with a willing spirit and honor the earth you have made. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts. With our own serve tomorrow and throughout the week until we have an opportunity to meet again. For God takes those things that are small and makes them great through your discipleship. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. 